let's see where this goes. So to connect all the five volt stuff up, um, I'm gonna use this wire here. It's 18 gauge, it's well insulated, um, and it's stranded wire, copper wire in there. So it's gonna actually do a really good job carrying that five volt signal across. And uh, it's truly apparent as this content creator is discussing the cable that's going to be carrying his five volt signals. He truly doesn't understand what really matters in the stability of the system in that he would have explained that's all good and fine that it's stranded cable it's all good and fine it's copper core it's all good and fine that the insulation is good but without the proper double shielding your signals are at risk for EMI penetration, in which case then they become corrupt, in which case then the robot becomes essentially a paperweight. This is the detail these content creators do not understand. And you guys, the more you pay attention to these videos, you become more adept at spotting the knot. That's the purpose. It's not about BSing you and making it fill time with more and more content, once again, for entertainment. It should be that they're not just regurgitating what they think they get to try to imply to their audience, hey, I know what I'm doing. They have no idea what they're doing. On this side, I couldn't see the labels correctly on that side, but uh, I moved them over. They're actually supposed to be the... Uh, Five volt positive for pulse and direction. So I moved the, the white and greens over on all three. And then for the negative connections, I ran these 18 gauge wires around and to the pulse and direction pins for X, Y, and A. I'm sure many of you like me always wonder how these content creators can assemble a controller in roughly the same time frame. If you go back in my volumes, you will find that in this video series, the average time frame for a video is about 20 minutes. It's amazing they can all wire controllers within 20 to 30 minutes, yet never discuss the proper use of double shielded cable.